Our second exercise in the objective of driving pressure is called turn on the haunches. Another term that we use for this is yielding the shoulder. Now you can get as specific as you'd like to be on those two terms and I encourage you to study those terms because they do have slightly different meanings even though they look a lot alike. The objective of turn on the haunches is to move the horse's front feet over away from our body through a cue while keeping the hind quarters of the back feet relatively still. She will have to reset those feet, but they kind of need to be the pivot point of the circle while the front feet move in the perimeter of the circle. All right, so we don't need a training stick for this generally, unless we're working with a horse that may be volatile, we have to create some space. But if you're just working with our lesson horses here at our ranch, or you have a, a maybe a tame horse that you're working with, you can pretty well get away with just your lead rope in your hands. Now, I like to think of the phases of pressure like this. If this were the horse and this is my hand, once again, I'm just trying to create an environment that the horse wants to move away from. So if this is the horse, this is my hand, I'm going to start off by just patting the air right beside her halter, right, right behind her eye and under her ear. So I'm just patting the air just kind of moving my hand and if you could imagine that somebody came up to your face and kind of did this and kind of make you want to move away from it it's a natural response and we use that to our advantage to move our horse over so if that doesn't work i'm going to come in closer and closer and start making contact with that halter with the knot on the halter on the side of the face there on the cheek piece and we're actually going to be utilizing this knot right here the point of using that knot is that we don't have to make hard contact with the horse's face and in turn make them head shy. We don't ever want to do that. We want to be able to put our hand around our horse's face without them worrying about our hand. Okay, so it's just a tool for a little bit more of a pinpoint pressure so we can be lighter right here on, this, on the cheek piece of the horse. All right, so this is what it looks like we're going to take our rope we don't need all of this rope we're just going to take it and throw it right over the withers and all we need is this portion of the rope we're going to grab about a foot or so down with our right hand and then we're going to be using our left hand as our driving hand the right hand's only job is to stop the horse from going forward you're going to find on this exercise whenever you start asking the horse's front feet to move lateral to the side the commonality of most horses when you train them is they want to step forward because that's what most horses do if they feel under pressure. They're going to try to move forward. So that's the purpose of this hand. It's just simply going to bump back. And when you bump back on this rope, it bumps the front of the halter and it stops forward motion of the horse. So I'm going to demonstrate now. I'd say Shire is pretty relaxed. She's ready to go. She'll, she'll listen up whenever we get started. Remember to add your verbal cues as well as you're doing this. Now pay attention to the fact that I go through my phases lightly. I add the verbal cue and in turn she will move her front feet laterally or away from me. All right, here we go. I'm just going to move in. Here comes the feet. She's going to reset. And there's that lateral movement that I'm looking for. All right. It should be done very lightly, especially when you're training your horse in the early phases of turn on the haunches. Now you may be wondering, why do we need to know how to do a turn on the forehand, turn on the haunches and backing from the ground? Well, these ground skills all have purpose. It's not just to look good in a round pin or round corral and just so that your horse knows to move away from you. It's for a lot of other things that are useful in everyday life. But let's start off with the psychology of it. If you ever look at horses in a field, the alpha horse or the horse that's in charge of the herd will generally be able to move the other horses away from them whenever at will, whenever they want to. All right, so they can pin their ears back. They can just step into that horse that is maybe less dominant. And that less dominant horse, maybe the Omega, he's going to move out of the way or there will be consequences to it. So everything that we do with horses, especially in training, we have to consider that horses are horses. They don't understand the way humans are. They don't understand English. So we have to become like them. We have to study them in the herd. We have to know how they act with one another in the herd and then emulate that. So that's kind of what we're doing in the 
psychological aspect of this part of the training is we're teaching the horse that we are the leader and that they should move out of our way if we come through. That really submits the horse. It gets them to where they, they listen to us. They comply with what we ask. Otherwise, we can end up with kind of a, a bickering match along the way in our relationship with our horse. Now, that's the psychological aspect of these three exercises we do under driving pressure. There are other objectives here, though. In everyday life, we use these things. So a turn on the forehand, for instance, when we're asking the hip to move over, if your horse is tied off to a rail and he's turned sideways on the rail, maybe you're feeding your horses all tied off next to each other, and he moves his hip over, well, the last thing you really want to do, especially if you don't trust the horse yet, is to go back there and start pushing on his hip and put yourself in that dangerous scenario of being by his back legs. So you can actually do this from a distance, and you can ask the horse to move over from four or five, six feet away and still get the desired response. A turn on the haunches whenever you're asking the horse's front feet to move over with a body language cue. Well, that's an easy one. When you're leading your horse and you want to make a sharp right turn, maybe you need to go over here on the other side of this horse's face. Well, it's in the way. And if the horse has never been trained to move out of your space, you'll either have to do one of two things. You'll have to run around the front of the horse to get there, or you'll have to turn your horse all the way around backwards to get back over where you want to be. Instead, you can just simply move her head over if she's conditioned to understand this. And then finally, with backing with driving pressure, this is a big one. You can back them out of a trailer. You can back them over obstacles. Whatever you need uh, for backing, you could use that for with ease without having to force your horse backwards with the halter.